This weekend, Transformers Rise of the Beast opened in theaters. Now, so we're all eight of the theatrically released Transformers movies from worst to best. And coming at last place is Dark of the Moon. The second film, Revenge of the Fallen, is infamously terrible, but somehow, despite all the complaints people had about the second one, they somehow managed to make this one even worse. Megan Box didn't want to return for this one, and while she wasn't good in the first two films, the actress they replaced her with is somehow just as bad, possibly worse. The movie has a plot, technically, but it's pretty much just three hours of explosions, and it drags out so much to the point that it just gets repetitive and it stops being fun. I don't know how they screwed this up. It has a pretty simple story. It's about the moon landing, how the Decepticons were involved. That could be interesting. That's a cool idea. But it somehow manages to overstuff it so much that it just goes over the top instead of keeping it simple. Number seven, Transformers Revenge of the Fallen. Now, I don't necessarily blame anyone involved with the film for how it turned out. I blame the 2008 writer's strike. You can tell that this movie heavily affected by it, mainly the last third, because it's super rushed, because they wanted to get the movie out two years after the first one instead of delaying it to finish the script. Writer's strike aside, though, it's still not good. Michael Bay's super vulgar humor and racist stereotypes are an issue with all of his Transformers movies, but even more so with this one. The film can have some fun moments with battle scenes, but the plot and dialogue are atrocious. Number six, Transformers The Last Night. Now, while the dialogue and humor are just as horrible as the other Bay films, which is why it's a bit higher on this list than it should be, this is where the film, on a plot level, they pretty much just gave up. The film feels like three or four different movies with the way it's structured. Every 30 minutes, there's a new plot line, and it's very incoherent. The first 30 minutes are about a group of kids in a junkyard who team up with Mark Wahlberg, and then the next little bit is about going on a quest to find something involving Merlin and King Arthur, and then, and then, and then, and then, it just feels like they were making it up as they went along. Number five, Transformers 1987. The biggest problem with this movie is if you haven't seen the show, you're totally lost. It doesn't take the time to explain about who any of the characters are. It just throws you into it. There's barely any plot. It's just mindless action, though the soundtrack choices are pretty awesome. Mostly. Sometimes the way they're placed is a little odd. Like, there's a scene where the Autobots are getting absolutely slaughtered by the Decepticons, and the music they play is super upbeat and out of place. There's a randomly placed Weird Al song that doesn't have anything to do with the movie. like it's a YouTube poop. Remember those? Number four, Age of Extinction. This is a slight improvement over the worst of the Michael Bay films. Mark Wahlberg's character is frankly a lot more interesting than Shia LaBeouf's character. The film has the Dinobots. There's an interesting plot line about the villain trying to create his own army of Decepticons with the left behind Transformers technology. But then you got the side characters of Mark Wahlberg's daughter and her boyfriend who are pointless and drag the film down, so much so that they're not even in the next one. If it had just focused on Mark Wahlberg, it would probably be a bit higher up. Number three, Transformers. I'll admire this one at least attempted to get some stuff right. It's got good mythology, it's got some fun battles, but unfortunately it is drastically held back by the fact that it was directed by Michael Bay and has its typically low crass humor because what Transformers needs is almost constant body humor and sexual innuendo. Now if a different classier director had made this, it may have turned out a lot better, but what we end up with in this film is a very mixed bag. Number two, Rise of the Beasts. 
This had a lot of really interesting and cool ideas with the Transformers who are part animal. Anthony Ramos's character is likable. There's some good humor and very well done action. But it is held back by the first half. It is very oddly paced. It needed to be tightened up a bit. We spend far more time with the human characters than we should, but it does make up for it with a lot of really great action in the last third. And number one is Bumblebee. I adore this movie. It completely understood what Transformers is supposed to be. It's not super over the top and chaotic. It's a simple story in the same spirit of films like E.T. and the Iron Giant. It's got a human character who's actually charming and likable, and it has the funniest line in any of these films. They literally call themselves Decepticons. That doesn't set off any red flags. There's also quite a bit of heart to it. Bumblebee's dynamic with the main character is very cute and sweet. It's just a fun, charming little film with a lot of heart and emotion, and it comes in at number one. It's going to show your ranking of the Transformers movies that you've seen, and I will see you next time.